And a welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. Week 8 recaps from the Greater Cleveland Conference, Southwestern Conference, and the Suburban League. And more. Here and on more. Sports on Tap. Yeah, we always give... Uh, a little bit of taste. Yeah, that's right. Of the college, of the college, of the high school college, football landscape really? and college football. We'll talk it all here. Yeah, we do. We do a little bit of everything. Everything. But uh, we don't talk about Browns because there's nothing to talk yeah. about. Well, that that's absolutely the truth on yeah. that one. We we won't, we actually we enjoy watching some good football with these high school football. I teams. can confidently say, with the exception of your conference, every one of our teams that we cover has a better record than the Browns. Yeah. Not not tough to do at this point. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I can't claim that. We'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's but why I said I could confidently say because we just went over yours, but I didn't know how the sub- the National League went. Well, let's uh, we'll head to the uh, Suburban League National Division with Ed Dick as he'll recap Week Eight here. Ed, how's the, how was your league this week? All right. Well, uh, we are eighty percent of the way through the two thousand seventeen <laughs> high school football season. Numbers. The playoff picture is becoming clear as prospective teams jockey for that top four seed, which does guarantee you a home game in the first round of the state playoffs. We'll start on Thursday with a matchup of, with major playoff points on the line as Stowe Monroe Falls, 6-1 and one overall, 3-1 and one at the conference, hosted the Hudson Explorers, 6-1 and one overall, 4-0 oh in the conference going into that game. The Bulldogs sought out to avenge their only regular season loss last year, a 25-24 game where the Explorers came from behind to pull out the victory. Stowe quarterback Corian Rice started the, started the scoring. He darted 52 yards for a touchdown. Uh, Hudson All-Ohio kicker Grant Gagne connected another 32-yard field goal to close the gap to 7-3. Rice struck again, this time from four yards out, pushing the lead to 14-3 for Stowe. Explorers quarterback Colt Play answered with a 10-yard touchdown run, cutting the lead to 14-10. Uh, Rice again called his own number, scoring from nine yards out and giving the Bulldogs a 21-10 halftime lead. An interception by Stowe's Jared Atkinson set up one of Rice's runs, and then Isaiah Gray stripped the ball loose for a fumble recovery for the Bulldogs. Uh, so turnovers were, were a pretty big part of this for Stowe. They were able to turn Hudson over a couple of times. Stowe did kick off to start the second half, and kicker Gavin Costello executed a perfect dribble onside kick to himself. Stowe got the ball back 50 yards later. Running back Terry and Ray scored from two yards out to give the Bulldogs an insurmountable 28-10 lead. The Bulldogs defeat the Explorers 35-23. to mm. Stowe quarterback Corian Rice rushed 23 times for 266 yards and four touchdowns. Wow. Uh, the Stowe defense gave the Explorer offense fits all game. Uh, Colt Pillay for the Explorers finished six, uh, 16 of 22 passing. He had 203 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Uh, running back Kevin Callahan rushed, uh, rushed 19 carries for 85 yards. Wide receiver Colin Palatani caught four passes for 64 yards and a score for the Explorers. Uh, with the win, Stowe Monroe Falls improves to 7-1 overall, 4-1 in conference play. They currently sixth, sit sixth in Division I, Region One. They do control their own destiny. Stowe will travel to Cuyahoga Falls in Week 9. Hudson drops to 6-2 and two overall. They are also 4-1 and one in conference play. They sit fourth in Division Two, Region 5. They will travel to Twinsburg, where they also, uh, they also control their own destiny in that region. Undefeated Wadsworth, speaking of Twinsburg, undefeated Wadsworth coming into this game 7-0 overall, 4-0 in the conference. They hosted the Twinsburg Tigers, 3-4 overall, 1-3 in the conference coming into this game. Uh, this was Wadsworth's homecoming. Uh, Twinsburg actually got an early turnover. They stripped Grizzly quarterback Joey Bachman, converted it to a 25-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Seth Grabowski to wide receiver Trey Radford. After that, the Grizzlies locked in. They scored 40 unanswered points over the course of just about three quarters. Brock Snowball and Grant Martinez caught touchdown passes of 26 and 14 yards from Bachman to take a 14-7 lead after the first quarter. Mitchell Blackburn and Snowball sandwiched receiving touchdowns of 47 and 44 yards around a three-yard touchdown run from running back Dominic Laparo for a 33-7 lead at the half. 
of Bachman completed his fifth touchdown pass early in the third quarter. He hit just uh, he hit uh, Mitchell Blackburn for a six yard touchdown pass to account for the forty to seven lead. Bachman then finishes the night with a twenty four yard touchdown run. The Grizzlies go on to a fifty four to twenty victory over the Twinsburg Tigers. For Twinsburg, Trey Radford caught his second touchdown from quarterback Adam Van de Motter. Uh, wide receiver Christian Edgerson got on the board. He also caught a 19-yard touchdown pass from Grabowski. Grabowski completed 8 of 13 passes for 136 yards and two touchdowns. Van de Motter completed 5 of 12 for four 54 yards. He had one touchdown and two interceptions for the Tigers. Running back Cameron McLean, he had 84 yards on 21 carries. Trey Radford caught two passes, both for touchdowns, total of 35 yards. Uh, Christian Edgerson continues his great season as a wide receiver for the Twinsburg Tigers. He caught five passes for 77 yards and one touchdown. Wadsworth's Joey Bachman became just the ninth quarterback in Medina County history to pass for over 2,000 yards in a season. He threw for five touchdowns and ran for another. Twinsburg drops to 3-5 and five overall, 1-4 and four in the conference. Right now they sit 14th in Division II Region 5. They will host Hudson in Week 9. Wadsworth continues their undefeated season. They are at 8-0 overall, 5-0 in the conference. The Grizzlies are number 2 in Division II Region 6. They control their own destiny for making the state playoffs. Next week, they will host Brexville, Broadview Heights. What a game, man. And yeah. give credit to Wadsworth. What a... You know, they were struggling for a few years, and what a bounce-back year. I mean, just they're dominating really up and down their schedule. Uh, Twinsburg, not a bad team either. Um, they've played some very tough teams and, and hung around in some games. But, you know, you look at Wadsworth, just – I mean, really, I, I, I can't see – you know, the closest game is what? You know, six – actually, it might be 54 to 20 – or actually 41 to 28 still. Um, but, man, just dominating this year. Impressive to watch. Yeah, they have a. They've had a, a great point. I mean, and, and they've had a big growth year from last year. A lot of these guys played off. You know, a lot of these guys played last year. Uh, you, you had you, you brought back Mitchell Blackburn. You brought back uh, Bronx Snowball, and you brought back Joey Bachman. Uh, they put some pretty gaudy numbers up last year, but when they ran into it into a team like a Stowe or a Hudson, uh, some of the better teams on their schedule, they weren't over to overcome them. Um, you know, so at at the time you thought, all right, well they can put numbers up on teams who aren't as good as they are when they actually meet a challenge they can't rise up to it they have more than answered the call this year uh you know, with with victories over stowe uh that being their biggest one right now uh a 41 to 28 decision they have they have not beaten a team above 500 besides that but right now they're doing what they're supposed to be doing to, to these types of teams they're averaging 51 points a game um, that's insane that's, yeah, that's that's impressive. over that's over eight eight games and and they're you know they're giving up uh, on the average just quick figures about uh, you know anywhere from like twenty one to twenty two on the average. Well, they have tough games to end the season really, and that kind of w- in my opinion will prep them for the playoffs. You know, facing a six and two Hudson team and a four and four Brexville team who is very good. So you know that'll prep them for the playoffs right there. Yeah, and, I, and th- there's no doubt they're going to make the playoffs. It's just right now they're just. We're, we're, they're just going to try to, fi- you know, if they can finish 10-0, uh, they're going to be guaranteed a home game uh, over at Art Rate Stadium there in uh, in Wadsworth. So, you know, that'll be a great game between Wadsworth and Hudson in Week 10. I'm looking forward to that to that matchup. Up uh, the 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 very potent offense of uh, of Wadsworth against the stingy defense that right now they showed they ha- they showed a little they showed a little cracks in the in the foundation there against Corian Rice. Uh, who didn't really have to throw very much against them. They're going to be coming up against a team in, that has a very prolific running quarterback and obviously a great passing quarterback, Joey Bachman, and all the weapons that he has uh, at his disposal. All right, we move to Broadview Heights, where uh, which is home of the Brexville Broadview Heights. Bees. They came in this matchup 4-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the conference. They hosted the North Worlds and Bears. Uh, coming in at three and four overall, one and three in the conference. This is an old school Pioneer Conference matchup here uh, between two neighboring cities. Uh, the Bears jumped on the bees early as sophomore quarterback Joey Marisick found tight end Adam Barrett for a 38-yard touchdown. Marisick outplayed 
Brunksville's freshman quarterback, Joe Labas. Uh, Marisick added rushing touchdowns of 29 and 21 yards. And the be- uh, the Bears, uh, you, can, you can argue this might be an upset, uh, but the Bears defeat the Bees. 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 Leading, uh, they won 27 to 12. Compadre wasn't on that one. He's Sorry. sleeping over I here. I was trying to do math. Yeah, you don't want to ask the. You don't want to ask the. No wonder his head's about to explode. Yeah, oh, my my compadre is trying to work this, work some numbers out over Your there. Your comrade. Yeah, I got a cr- I, I'm there. crunching numbers and they're crunching me right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the for uh, North Royalton, uh, Bears uh, running back Jake Francic also rushed for a touchdown uh, to cap the scoring for the Bears. Uh, Marisick completed six to twelve passes for 103 yards and a touchdown. He also added 95 yards on 12 carries and then two more touchdowns. Uh, Bears running back Zach Antonio had 18 carries for 121 yards. The Bears improved to four and four overall. They are two and three in the conference. They currently sit at number 12 in Division Two Region Six. They will host Macedonia Nordonia in Week Nine. The Bees playoff ho- playoff hopes took another hit with this loss, uh, dropping them to four and four overall, two and three in the conference. They are now number 13 in Division Two, Region 5. Uh, having lost a very tough game to North Royalton and a, an extremely tough game to Macedonia and Ordonia in Week 7, you know, they could just as easily be 6-2 and two right now and really sitting on that 8-9 spot for Division Two, Region 5. Unfortunately, uh, they, they, they've, run, they've come across some tough luck. They can redeem themselves with a victory over undefeated Wadsworth on the road next week. So, I mean, there's a lot of points on the on the board here for Bruxville Broadview Heights. Uh, if they can find a way to slow down that that uh, the amazing offense of Justin Todd and his Grizzlies. Last and certainly not least, winless Cuyahoga Falls traveled to Macedonia to take on the Nodonia Knights. The Knights looked to build on their first win of the season last week over Bruxville Broadview Heights. Knights quarterback Robbie Levick started the scoring. He found wide receiver Ty Evans for a 75-yard touchdown pass. However, the Black Tigers answered back with a 90 or the touchdown pass from quarterback Ty Vasilotti to wide receiver Deshaun Brazil. Evans wasn't done. On the ensuing kickoff, he scampered 90 yards for a kickoff return for a touchdown. Undeterred, the Black Tigers countered with two touchdown runs by running back James Cross covering seven and one yard to put the Black Tigers on top 20 to 14. Nordonia then took command of the game. They scored the next 21 points and they led to a 35 to 20 uh, and a 25 I'm sorry, a, t- a 35 and 20 to 20 lead. Cross for Cuyahoga Falls then scored his third touchdown in the game for the Black Tigers. Uh, Levick for the Knights then answered with an 8-yard touchdown run. Vasilotti, he ran 65 yards for a touchdown. Nordonia's Justin Bell then countered with a 41-yard touchdown run. At the end of this game, the Nordonia Knights win their second game in a row, defeating the Black Tigers 49-34. to uh, Easily the best offensive output for the Cuyahoga Falls Black Tigers all, all year. Uh, Cuyahoga Falls' is Ty Vasilotti threw and w- ran for a touchdown apiece. Running back James Cross rushed 24 times for 97 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, so, you know, great game out of James Cross and uh, a great offensive output uh, for the Black Tigers. Uh, Nordonia quarterback Robbie Levick, he hit 16 of 21 passes for 264 yards, three touchdowns. He also threw a pick. Wide receiver Ty Evans caught four passes for 111 yards and a touchdown to go with his 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. For Nordonia, Justin Bell had six carries for 53 yards and a score. With the win, Nordonia improves to 2-6 and six overall. They are 2-3 and three in conference play. They are 17th in Division II Region 5. The Knights will travel to North Royalton next week. Calgary Falls drops to 0-8 overall, 0-5 in conference play. They are tied for 27th in Division II Region 5. It's not looking much better for them next week. They will host Stowe Monroe Falls in Week 9. Uh, player of the week for the division for the conference this week, it's going to be Stowe quarterback Corian Rice. 266 rushing yards on 23 carries and four touchdowns against a very stout Hudson defense. Uh, so congratulations to Mr. Rice. 
um, you know, he might have come up with a blue. He might, he might have. They might have come up with a blueprint for maybe an effective way to take to take down Hudson. You know, and Wadsworth in Week Ten does have that dual threat quarterback and Joey Bachman to do it. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I think. I think uh, if Stowe can continue to do what they're doing both offensively and defensively, Wadsworth may come up against their first true test. I think, or perhaps their biggest test going into the playoffs. Uh, when you have a guy like Corian Rice for Stowe, who is you know, a very good and a very effective quarterback and a very, very good runner, you know, that that creates a situation for the defense of Wadsworth to say, okay, now we have to account for not only passing. They already played. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh. Wadsworth and Hudson. Oh, That's sorry. That's the comparison. No, I, I meant uh, Stowe and Wadsworth. Right? Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think uh, Duff went on a math overload there. <laughs> <laughs> He's still crunching numbers over here, but well, you know it's got to be your bull. No, but <laughs> you look. No, well, it's funny because it's your dog. Yeah, <laughs> we had a chance to to cover Stowe, and I mean, Corian Rice is a real deal. I mean, he's a he's a multi. He can run. He can pass. I mean, he has a really good arm, and I think offensively, you know, Stowe's a really good team. Consistently good. Uh, Wadsworth, we talked about offensively. They're just putting up crazy numbers. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, in that national division, and who's going to make the playoffs come said and done once uh, Week Ten's over? Yeah, right now you're looking at Hudson, Stowe, and Wadsworth. There's a possibility they could all end up with one loss. If wa if Hudson beats Wadsworth, you have a three-way tie for the national division championship there. Uh, and the other team to look out for right now, in my mind, is North Royalton, and uh, they've already they've gone through the tough part of their schedule. They have already played all the big boys. They've beat everybody. They've beaten they've beaten Ridgeville, which. You know, if, if Ridgeville got a break here and there against Avon, that looks like a really good win then for, yeah. for North Royalton. You know, they've beaten a 4-4 four and four Parma team. They've beaten a 4-4 four and four Brexville team. Uh, it's looking – they play Nordonia and Cuyahoga Falls. Now, they might not get much help from them, but they can end up with a 6-4 and four season, and we'll see what happens uh, as, the playoffs, as, the, as the playoffs roll, ar uh, roll around. Right now, I mean, they're sitting at 12, but they're only two points behind Amherst Steel for that eighth and final spot. So North Royalton would need to win these next two games, but also get a lot of help because you're only beating teams that have a total of two wins, and that's not going to that's not gonna bode well for them for those second-level points. Uh, so North Royalton is most likely, you know, they're still, they have the closest shot, I think. Um, actually, I would say Brexham Broadview Heights, based on potential points, has the, has the closest shot, but um, you know, we, we know that they have a very tough road ahead of them. So... Uh, definitely uh, plenty to look out for in Division uh, in Division Two, Region Five, Division Two, Region Six, and Division One, Region One, for all of these teams. All right, I'm going to swing it over to uh, my cohort, my compadre, my colleague, uh, Sean Duffy, is going to take us through the Suburban League American Division. Thanks, Ed. I'm going to attempt to do it. Uh, batting o for tonight, so <laughs> see how this goes. Uh, first, we'll start out as Revere travel to Aurora, and Aurora is coming off a highly, highly emotional game, emotional win against Highland in Week 7. Uh, they are, were looking to continue their their winning streak, again, and they were able to do just that, dismantling Revere 35-7 to in Week 8. Aurora's Colin McNamara led the way passing for two touchdowns in the night. Meanwhile, Aurora's running back duo of Drew McVay and Brent Henderson both chipped in with a touchdown each, and Revere's offense was able to manage one touchdown, but it was late in the third quarter, and that was when the game was well out of hand. Aurora still in the hunt for a playoff spot in the Division Three Region 9, currently sitting in 10th place. Aurora will host Copley in Week 9, which, cl which will close out their conference play, but an interesting uh, non-conference matchup against Columbus Mifflin, who's sitting at 7-1 and one, and, I believe, third in the Division 2 Region 7 uh, playoffs, playoff standings. Revere will host Bay in a non-conference matchup in Week 9. Moving on, we have Barberton traveling into Talmadge, and I was talking to Josh on Friday night as we were at uh, our game of the week, and he asked me at one point as I'm jotting down my notes, hey, what did you think of that Barberton Talmadge matchup? I said, ah, it's going to be a close one. I was wrong. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't it was, close at all. Barberton's defense was outstanding in Week 8 in the routing of Talmadge. Barberton running back Jeff Parker rushed for 155 yards and three touchdowns on the night. 
Zane Reese and Garrett Turnbull hooked up for, and connected for two touchdowns, and Barberton is currently in the driver's seat for not only a conference title, but they're even shooting for a number one seeding in Division Three Region 5, and they will host Revere. I'm sorry, not Revere. Uh, they will host Roosevelt in Week 9. I knew it was going to happen. Now, Talmadge themselves, this doesn't kill them in their play in their playoff race. However, they don't uh, they no longer control their own destiny in Division Three, uh, Region Nine, and they will host and they will have to travel to Highland and beat them in order to keep their winning ways going. Uh, again, that the Barberton Talmadge score was thirty four to three. Barberton improves to eight and zero and five and zero in the conference. Talmadge falls to six and two in two and two in the conference. Highland traveled to Copley, and, you know, just as much as Aurora was riding high coming off that win against Highland, Highland was probably having to swallow a bitter pill. Uh, we talked to Coach uh, Gibbons at, uh, on the uh, on the show last week, and you could kind of tell he was ready to move on to this, and they wanted to, you know, get back on, on winning track, and, boy, did they do just that. They completely dominated Copley. They went into Copley, and they beat him, and the star of the game, it's basically the star of Highland right now, and it's Jake Rogers. Jake Rogers scored five touchdowns in the night and racked up almost 500 yards, totaling 471 yards on on the offensive side of the ball for Highland. Wow. Rogers rushed for four touchdowns, and he caught a pass touchdown. Highland still controls its own playoff destiny in Division II Region 6. They currently sit in third place, and again, if they win out, you likely see them hosting a playoff game. Um, Highland will host Talmadge in Week 9, so again, there's a little bit more intrigue here because Highland needs Highland and Talmadge both need to con basically win, uh, win out to have a shot not only at the playoffs but also a possible outside shot for Highland at a conference title. Copley will travel to Aurora in Week 9. Now, our m my lone non-conference game was Columbia Crestview traveling to Kent Roosevelt, and it was all Crestview. Crestview ran all over Roosevelt. They had Roosevelt had no idea how to stop the running back, uh, the running game of Crestview. Running back Rose, Roosevelt running back Nathan Jones had a pretty good night on his own. Had 21 carries for 73 yards and two touchdowns. While Roosevelt wide receiver Calvin Blackman had 100 yards receiving. Unfortunately, it was not enough, and they lost to they lost to Crestview 35 to 18. Roosevelt falls to two and six and one and three on the year. Roosevelt will ha will have a tall task in hand as they have to travel into Barberton, who is looking to continue to be undefeated and march towards a division, a American division title. My player of the week has got to be Highlands Jake Rogers. I don't know if this is his second or his third one, but you put up 471 yards of offense and five touchdowns, you're going to get player of the week honors. Uh, moving on, I want to touch on Buckeye. Uh, they had a very, very intriguing matchup against uh, ranked Firelands in week eight. Uh, in a matchup of two 7-0 and teams, a conference rivalry, and a push for a play for a top playoff spot for both of these teams, Buckeye Bucks, the Buckeye Bucks were able to secure the very, very close 25-22 win. They were led by star quarterback Adam Favre, who rushed for 211 yards, throwing for 153, and having a hand in all four touchdowns. In fact, he scored three touchdowns on the ground and threw to, uh, to slot back Justin Kennedy for a 51-yard touchdown pass. Buckeye continues to dominate the Patriot Athletic League Stars Division and sits in second place in Division Three Region Nine. Buckeye will face Keystone in Week Nine, and which again they will are on kind of the same track as Barberton, looking to continue uh, an undefeated season, wrap up the conference, and hopefully wrap up a top spot in the div in their division so they can host a playoff game come uh, come playoff time. So guys, that's the American Division. You know, separation a little bit. We see Aurora kind of hanging around there. And believe it or not, Aurora's own four wins have all come in conference. So they win next week, and some craziness happens when Barberton meets Highland or Barberton drops a, a, a loss there. And we're talking a split division for the second year in a row, and Aurora may come out of this with a share of that division and possibly a playoff spot. Although the more I look at the math, and that's why I was a little, you know, stupid, uh, I was uh, trying to figure out how how Aurora gets in in Division Three Region Nine, and they would have to win out, obviously, and and hopefully get some very good points for from Mifflin. Um, but again, you got teams like you know they're they're currently in tenth, and St. Vincent St. Mary's there, Kenston's there, and Woodridge is currently uh, wait seventh, right? Yes, seventh. So I mean, those are the teams that are kind of vying for that spot. But again, Chardon's still there, hanging around. Uh, Marlington is in that division, so they have an opportunity to get some points, with, especially with playing a very good team in Mifflin at the end of the year out of conference. But you know, 
Aurora has an opportunity here, and they and all they were almost dead rights coming into the conference play, and they've kind of turned around these last four weeks. Yeah, Aurora's been a little bit on a roll, and uh, you know you could see obviously their confidence versus Highland. I mean, getting a huge win on the road there, uh, but it was nice to see Highland bounce back. You know, talking to Coach Gibbons, uh, I think that's what he said. You know, that game's in the rear view. Got to have the players foc focus on this next game because they've had a great season so mm -hmm. far. Um, I think that's a huge uh, a sign when they can bounce back after a tough loss, I mean, yeah. especially when it's that close. So great job uh, by Aurora to get a win, Highland getting a win. And Talmadge, I mean, even though they yeah. lost, they're still right there. You know, one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is week 10, you have uh, Barberton and Highland. And if Barberton's playing like they are playing and Highland can continue to play like they've played, this past week and maybe other weeks they kind of they're kind of that up and down team they, they 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 run into you know some teams that figure them out pretty quickly or maybe they get in their own way they're gonna have to play almost a perfect game against a barberton team that just seems to just unload on on points i mean garrett turnball is probably one of the best receivers i've seen in a while you know with a guy like jeff parker who can run the ball you got zane reese who could throw the ball over the yard that defense they're gonna be tough to beat i mean they're 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 a tough beat in any circumstances but home and the play in a playoff at type atmosphere you got to wonder what that's like and and you know barberton's looking for that number one one number one seed and they just might get it you know you look at that region two me the region you know, division two region five shaping up pretty good for barberton i mean i'm looking at some of the possible opponents right now they would take on east lake north uh i did a two seven matchup yeah um they e east lake i mean and if you <laughs> It's very top heavy in this region because mm -hmm. you have Archbishop Hoban, obviously a, a, a traditional power, Barberton, which has be ha has a has, yeah they've had a resurgence lately, mm -hmm. uh, Brush and Hudson and Bedford, those are your top five teams right now. Um, you know Bedford's if it has a very potent offense, you might want to avoid them. If I was yeah. Barberton, I might want to avoid uh, Bedford. Benedictine always a tough matchup as well. But if you can get if you can stay in that two in one line. You're probably going to be looking at a team that's going to be no better than six and four, yeah. maybe even five and five. You know, right now you have a four and four East Lake North team as number seven, uh, four and four Garfield Heights team as number eight, four and four Mayfield number nine, four and four in Lake Catholic at number ten, three and five Green at at number eleven. You know, so you got some very favorable matchups there. I think from from Barberton's perspective, if they could stay in that two or or even make it to the top seed. Is it, is it too much of a stretch to think that a, a Brexville Broadview Heights team comes from where they are now at 13 up? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at it from eight down, they all have 500 records or losing records. So, I mean, it's not unheard of to see a team like Brexville Broadview Heights make that surge up to the eighth spot. Now, granted, they would be facing either a Hoban or a, or a Barberton, but, you know, definitely doable for Brexville Broadview Heights. And we saw it a little bit last year in the playoffs where we saw a cross-divisional matchup in the Suburban League in the first round of the playoffs. But I think it was in this division or possibly in another one, maybe re maybe Division Three, Region 9. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's a team that I'm looking at there that has the possibility to uh, to move up, you know, quickly well, just by winning out. I mean, if you look at their minimum win-out division, you know, it's probably one of the higher ones than, than the three or four teams above them, so... It's not unhur it's not unlikely to see a Brexville Broadview Heights be in the in the mix for that eighth spot come uh, week ten. I I agree because I mean they have Stowe and Brexville Broadview. I'm sorry, Wadsworth left. Yeah. You know, so you got 15 wins between those two opponents right there. If they can find a way to knock both those teams out or split it even. I yeah, a split would help them out immensely as well. I mean, if you if you split, you know, you're looking somewhere between the 1165 and the 179 range. That might be enough to get you in in mm -hmm. this in this in this region, uh, Division Two, Region Five, because there's just not a whole lot of heavy hitters in this region. Um, traditional powers, you know, Brestwood Broadview Heights. If they don't lose the last two games, they're probably yeah. They're they're six and two. They're probably hanging around this seven maybe area. seven eight seven six eight, seven. Yeah. I'd say six seven eight range. Definitely mm -hmm. in the playoff hunt right now. Um, you know, East Lake North had a big win over Lindhurst Brush, which has really gotten them to where they are right now. You know, so uh, with this, with, with the the other teams in your conference, uh, they're tough. I mean, Talmadge right now, they're hanging on to a four seed. Uh, they're most likely, you know, if, if they can, a lot of points between 
Highland and Talmadge coming up in this week's mm-hmm. game for sure. Yeah. Um, it, it's either I think it, that could either cinch a it definitely clinch a playoff spot to whoever wins the game, mm-hmm. and depending on how it shakes out, they may even clinch a home game. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. With a victory here, uh, Talmadge will then uh, go to Revere, a two-win team right now. Um, you know, you always want to get the win for the points, but you might not get as much help from Revere as you, uh, you, yeah, yeah, as you may want. I think with Talmadge, okay, yeah, I think one of the things with Talmadge is, you know, that's a team that was one of the lower end of the. You teams. wanted the numbers, you got the numbers. We're getting you, we're giving you solid stuff here. Yeah, got the, I'm sorry, we can't. We're not. We're the lesser known conferences out of the two big boys over there. Tell them, tell them, Ed. And I know em. I coached one of them, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I was just going to say that if you look at the Talmadge over the last couple of years, they've been in the bottom half of the, the American division. And now to, to be in week nine holding a four seed in the, their division, got to be they got to kind of respect it but not let it consume them going in. They can't think about next week. they got to focus on what's going on. Other than that, I think we're set up for some really great football in the Suburban American <laughs> League and national divisions. <laughs> And I like it. So I, li- I like that division, two, the division three, region nine. I mean, that that one's going to really. That's a fun one, yeah. There's not a whole lot of separation between the the like the five and the twelve teams, so there's a lot it can go. A lot can happen there. And here's Ed's going to break down the numbers, number by number by number. That's what we do. Hey, you guys are doing a great job. I did Very math. Informative. Not well, but I did math. And we'd let we'd let you do that if we had a ten hour show today. So we do. But. We are going to take a short break, a very short break. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk about our game of the week from last week. It was Olmstead Olmstead Falls, Falls versus at Midview. Midview. And we'll tell you about our upcoming game Part of the time. week. When we <laughs> 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 we'll talk about our upcoming game of the week for week nine when we come back. We're Sports on Tap for Ohio High School football coverage. 